Hello and good evening. I'm Melissa Idris. And I'm Sharad Kutin. Welcome to Consider This. This is the show where we want you to consider and then reconsider what you know of the news of the day. On December 23rd, the Malaysian United Democratic Alliance, uh, better known as MUDA, was officially registered as a political party. This was after the High Court ordered the Home Ministry to register MUDA within 14 days as a result of MUDA's third legal action challenging the government's dismissal of its application. Now, official, now officially part of the political landscape, will MUDA be the vehicle of a new politics that they claim to want to establish? Joining us now is Member of Parliament for Moa uh, Johor and MUDA co-founder, Said Sadiq, Said Abdurrahman. Sadiq, uh, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Now, I'm just wondering, you know, it's not been an easy journey getting here as an officially registered political party. Wondering what this journey and the obstacles in the way, what that's taught you and your fellow co-founders about, um, about Malaysian institutions. Uh, if anything, it has taught us that we cannot simply rely on personality politics. We cannot simply rely on hyper-partisan politics, but we need to find a way to overhaul uh, the democratic system in Malaysia to ensure that no prime minister and no political party who assume power can abuse their position to stop the registration of a party, to abuse uh, institutions like MACC and the police for their own uh, political use. The point is to create a system which is very much independent, run with integrity, with transparency, a system in which even if we change governments 10 times in a year, the Malaysian economy will still grow, the Malaysian people will still prosper, and civil service will keep on turbocharging forward. And that's the system which Muda wants to build. Politics based on an overhaul of a system instead of personality and partisan politics per se. Sadiq, that's wonderful. You know, those values that you express, I think a lot of people would want to sign up to that. Uh, but the question uh, is, you, that's the horizon. Now, how do we get from here to that horizon? The party structure is going to be essential in, uh, in getting there right, in that particular journey. So tell us what are the debates between you and your co-founders in terms of party structure, you know, whether you, you opt for a carter based system or you're going to go for a mass-based system. And this is where I truly feel at, uh, at home, sir. I feel at home because finally I'm in a party in which um, we spend a lot more time on heated debates on party policies, national policies, uh, on principal stances which we should take instead of fighting about power, positions, money, uh, and only moving when uh, money is used. So with that in mind, um, at the moment, while waiting for our AGM, we are engaging in heated debates on what's the best party structure to use. Do we disrupt? Also, it's not just on the party structure. How do we ensure that MUDA, as a government in waiting, um, can fundraise well and at the same time ensure that it will not be tied to specific corporate interests, which in the end will weaken our ability uh, to run the government independently and with integrity. So really building in a strong uh, startup financial model uh, which is highly transparent with proper auditing done and monthly reports to the public and to donors while at the same time capping the amount of donation which each particular donor can give so that we are not overly reliant on a few corporate figures. So really it's a combination of getting, of making this party by far the most diverse, not just in terms of race and religion, but gender, political beliefs, um, um, so that in the end we will become a party which truly celebrates diversity, not merely tolerate it, and at the same time, lock in proper party reforms to ensure that it's not just a start-up phenomenon at the beginning, but even 10, 20, 30 years down the road, uh, the structure will lock these values in and ensure that MUDA will turbocharge Malaysia forward to become a developed country. Yeah, so if I could get you to give us some of the specifics about uh, what you've opted for, especially when we think about, you know, the bar for qualification for membership in the party. Uh, what have you guys decided? This is truly a highly inclusive party. So the, the barrier to entry is remarkably low. Uh, not only is it a truly diverse, multiracial, multireligious and moderate political front, but it also welcomes those from all age categories, young and old. Um, and with that in mind, the reason why we're able to build a very strong membership in less than three weeks, now we have almost 74,000 members uh, across Malaysia, uh, because we lower the barrier to entry, because besides uh, changing the hearts and minds 
uh, of 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 uh, of fellow voters is also about ensuring that our muda members will become agents of change. Just look at how uh, we address flood relief. These are people without much political experience, without much political background, but really coming together, uh, different professional backgrounds, race, religion, putting their mind and effort and technical know-how uh, to assist uh, Muda and Malaysians with its uh, flood relief efforts. And that's what we want to do. While we may not attract and magnetize uh, a lot of uh, YBYBs, really we want to ensure that we get the best, brightest of talents, uh, which may be political lightweights, but have served their communities in many different ways to come together, serve, and from there on, we will build a mass-based party, uh, which is very much bottom-up and which is very much policy-driven and focused. Okay, that sounds, I mean, it's, it sounds great, sounds idealistic. And I want to uh, uh, come back to something you said a bit earlier about not wanting to uh, continue this culture of uh, personality politics. I want to focus though on the fact that you are, you know, whether you like it or not, unrecognizably unrecog the face of Muda. Uh, and I'm just wondering whether you've had some time to digest that, what the pros and cons are to that. The fact that you, for the masses, for many people, are the face of Muda. So the fact now that we are finally registered, it has given us a platform to push forward many other young faces in Muda and uh, to be honest, Melissa, if you uh, meet up with them, these are people which sincerely are much better than me. Um, and I believe once they're given a chance, uh, they'll do significantly better than me. These are people like Dr. Mazen, Dr. Tanusha, Dr. Ken, uh, Razita Judin, Mutali Osman, and many others uh, who come from very different backgrounds, who have served their own communities. Look at people like Sharizal Denchi, one of the most well-known uh, tech agropreneur in Sabah. Um, who has served his community uh, for more than 10 years, but at the same time has never had any experience in politics, but now would like to serve in politics. People like Dr. Ken, uh, who, who, who is a graduate of NUS, law degree, with a PhD as well, um, who runs our policy team, uh, is an exceptional individual. Uh, you look at our sec gen, Amira Aisha, who is now, I believe, has taken over my role as, uh, as, as a TikTok queen. Um, <laughs> Who, who, who's very, very eloquent, who's very principled, highly organized, really. The reason, and, and I believe the testament to this was uh, Muda's flood relief efforts. What I can tell you is that my effort in flood relief was less than 1%. The organization, the mobilization, the fundraising, the discussion on logistics, proper purchasing, uh, meeting up with multiple different uh, donors, they did all of that. I remember at one point in time, I just had to come to as a common center and they'll tell me, Sadiq, you have to go to these five locations, go now. And I will just follow because it was a highly organized team which signifies that Muda is not just uh, a Said Sadiq party, but it's really a highly diverse political party which intends to train many, many leaders in Malaysia, young and old, uh, to take over the reins of government. And I'm privileged to be able to work very closely with them. And um, I believe if they're given a chance, they will outshine me in no time. You know, I want to come to that um, conversation about floods that you mentioned. I mean, kudos to Muda for the, the work that you've done with floods. But then, you know, there's been some pushback or some, I guess, some um, backlash from that, despite, you know, all the good work that you've done. I guess one of the things was the comments made about, you know, it's theatrics. Um, a lot of it was was um, put on social media, um, and I guess what happened was this highly visible <laughs> flood relief effort became almost a um, it stung, I guess, because perhaps it, it showed up some of the gaps within state agencies' um, responses. How would you respond to that? Uh, first thing first, I always remind Muda members, including myself, being in uh, in politics we are susceptible to criticisms uh, and condemnation we should accept it uh, and learn how to move forward so when they say that we are being that, that these are all shows and mere acts um, i say the best way to respond to that is to show uh, the numbers is to show our good work so if you look at the beginning um, i think mudo was the first party who really moved forward we initially aimed to only raise ten thousand ringgit and now we've reached almost 3.5 million ringgit cash and in-kind. Initially, we only expected to recruit 300 volunteers. 
At the end, we were able to mobilize more than 11,000 volunteers across Malaysia. And if you look at the way in which the operations are run, in which we have three, sorry, five warehouses across Malaysia, proper organization, look at how we mobilize, I mean, tens and twenties of buses from one location to another, bringing volunteers, housing them, moving them, and then making sure that they get the best of experience while getting the job done which is to clean up houses, schools, etc. So really all of this, I believe, uh, if it was merely th uh, th theatrics, uh, the teachers in the schools would have already seen it. Um, uh, the owners of the houses who we clean up would already see it as well. And the fact that they are very uh, grateful, and we are grateful because we were given the opportunity to serve them, shows that this is genuine work done, less by me, but by the Muda volunteers and members who really work day in and day out. So it's wonderful, Zadek, you know, what you've just uh, demonstrated is a kind of proof of concept, right? Your ability to mobilize funds and mobilize people uh, in order to uh, uh, build this party. But there is another perhaps problem with service orientation uh, that you've just described, which is that, you know, service uh, provided by political parties doesn't always translate into what the PSM is, uh, Party Socialist Malaysia has had a, uh, you know, long time, uh, you know, problem with this, and they pride themselves being service oriented, labor issues and stuff. It's not always translated into votes, substantial votes to win elections. And I think we will want to win elections. So how do you deal with this gap between uh, the fact that people will accept uh, you know, the services very readily. They don't necessarily vote for you as a consequence. Uh, just two quick points to make. One is I believe those who take up the effort to recruit themselves as volunteers and the more than 60,000 donors uh, across Malaysia with an average donation of about 47 to 48 ringgit last I checked, I believe if they're willing to put their 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 sweat and tears, their money to Muda, uh, I believe they will become great supporters, um, uh, especially when GE comes. Second point to make here, I completely agree. I think one point which Muda should not be trapped into, uh, while the politics of service is unbelievably important, but the politics of policies is even more important. That's why uh, Muda will be coming up uh, with its uh, Green Deal um, after we do a nationwide listening tour in which we mobilize all 70,000 members of Muda, not just the leaders, it cannot be a typical town hall, but every single Muda member must go visit every single restaurant, warung, mama, office, speak to family and friends. Just bring your laptop or your phone or a piece of paper. Very simple question, ask them what Muda can do better to improve Malaysian politics, the state of the economy, education, listen. It's called a listening tour for a reason, so I'll be doing a lot more listening than speaking. Collate the, collate the data and after that come up with a uh, transformative uh, manifesto in which will really reset Malaysia and overhaul Malaysian politics uh, for good. So once you combine the politics of service and the politics of policies together, I think that's where uh, Muda will become a viable uh, government in waiting. And we look forward to work very hard to win the hearts and minds of Malaysians on that, on, on that end. All right. Okay, we're going to take a quick break, but let's come back and continue this conversation with more MP Said Sadiq uh, in just a couple of minutes. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned to consider this. Hi, thanks so much for staying with Consider This. I'm Melissa Idris. With me is Sharad Kutin. Let's uh, continue our conversation with more MP uh, Syed Sadiq, Syed Abdurrahman. He's the co-founder and party president of the reg recently registered MUDA. Um, Sadiq, let's come back to something you said a bit earlier about the politics of policy. And I think that's interesting because you have to delve further into that. If you're going to have this listening tour, what you might hear are a lot of populist suggestions. What, you know, uh, important on the ground, but um, 
things that are important to people may not be easy. Or sometimes in policy and politics, you have to make those difficult decisions that might be difficult to swallow, um, uh, figuratively speaking, uh, on the ground. So how do we, how, how is MUDA going to approach um, when that, need, that tough decision needs to be made? I think there will be a whole presentation of how we plan to run this nationwide listening tour after Chinese New Year during our launch. And we look forward to inviting uh, both of you to our launch, um, I think, second or third week of February. But a summary of it, uh, I agree with your point. You are absolutely right. It cannot just be a populist manifesto. So what we're going to do, divide it into two separate groups. One is where we go to every single warung, mama, house to house, the way of a, uh, in which we mobilize our grassroots to reach out to the mass audience. On the other hand, we'll also have listening tours with industry experts. I had the privilege of meeting up with the former uh, Panglima Akatan Tentera. I met up with a former IGP. Uh, yesterday, I'll be meeting up with many former head of civil service, uh, education experts, uh, economists. And these are all experts in your own fields and industries so that they will come up with a more pragmatic side of, 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 of things at the same time, we'll hear uh, uh, the voices of the masses as well. And then we will collate and, com and combine. And if you look at the credentials of our policy team, again, I'm not in a position to disclose who they are, but these are highly talented people. People have worked in multiple different think tanks, international agencies, uh, won multiple different awards. These are public policy experts as well. Um, so it's very exciting and interesting because it's something which they believe in, they're passionate in. And when you ask them, they're not even interested to contest, but they're so interested to serve. Because in the end, in the smallest of ways, they're able to bring a policy change and impact on Malaysian politics. And I believe once you combine all of that, you get a truly representative, a Malaysian um, um, a manifesto in which will represent the needs of all Malaysians while looking at specific comments, criticism, suggestions made by industry experts who will be listening a lot more to instead of us talking down to them. And I think that's okay, but critical Sadiq, how, listening to us. Right. Uh, how does this compare with Pakatan Harapan's uh, manifesto? Something that, uh, you know, uh, Tun Dr. Mathe happily rode in, uh, on into power and then almost immediately junked. Uh, and he returned uh, to his uh, Bumiputra agenda, his Malay agenda. And today we see also attacks on Muda for not, you know, and the attacks are very interesting because they attack, you, you know, your credentials uh, in terms of being a Malay Muslim. And so uh, that is, that is an in, almost insurmountable challenge in Malaysian politics. Katuana Melayu, the Malay agenda, especially in terms of economic uh, policies, I mean, how different can you be from the Pakatan Manifesto uh, and, and succeed? Uh, three quick points to make. Uh, first thing first, even before Basatu was set up, I think I've put it on record, and even it's recorded in Lim Kit Siang's book, uh, written by Liu Chin Tong. I was the only co-founder of Bersatu who wanted Bersatu to be a multiracial party. And right before GE14, there was an interview, I believe it was with Malay Mail, where I said that Bersatu must open up to all races. I remember receiving a lot of brickbats, but I wanted, I wanted to put that on record because I believe that multiracialism and moderation is the way forward. Inevitably and undeniably, I've made many mistakes throughout my political career and I will apologize for them and I learn from it. And that's where finally, when I set up Wuda, I finally feel as if I'm at home because they are like-minded people who believe in the right cause, who know how to balance idealism and pragmatism together. But our eyes to make Malaysia a developed country are aligned. We are together and we are very keen to turbocharge Malaysia forward. That's one. Second thing, um, I, I'm, I'm not here to berate uh, uh, Pakatan Harapan. But one thing which I believe could be a point of improvement is for the process to be a lot more representative. So instead of just talking to leaders, I believe Muda should set a 100-day timeline in which we mobilize all 70,000 members, not just the leaders of the parties. Every single member must reach out to at least 50 people, a minimum. And the leaders obviously will be expected to reach out to a lot more people online and offline, go to the warungs and mamaks, Every person you meet up, spend at least five minutes with them. Don't talk a lot, just listen. Jot it down, key it in within our system, and then there will be a whole data team to collate the data to come up with the proper process. And then we'll talk to industry experts as well to balance idealism 
and pragmatism together. So I believe once you come up with a truly holistic, uh, bottoms-up approach, which is highly representative, I think that's when, as Muda position itself to be a government in waiting, as you build that strong support, which comes from the ground, if we suddenly change our path, I mean, immediately we'll be wiped out in the following election. Uh, so it must be a truly representative uh, an inclusive process of decision making on how we craft policies uh, in moving forward. And the final thing I just uh, like to say here, so I believe that all criticisms uh, to me uh, have its reasons and I'll try my best to answer them. But I hope uh, that the public will see Muda beyond Syed Sadiq. Because as I've made many mistakes, if you look at Muda leadership, I mean, they are truly multiracial, moderate, um, they are run by technocrats and professional civil society activists, former civil servants, union leaders. It's a very interesting group of people. And we check one another. And that's where in meetings, even as a president, I can be shouted at. And there are many times where I was shouted at. But the reason why, again, I keep on stressing, I feel at home because now I no longer need to play the politics. Oh, okay, I'll give you a job. I'll give you money. I'll give you this. Now it's about me convincing them on my ideals, on my principles, policies, principles, stances, and if we, and, and, and if we, if they disagree, we'll engage in heated debates about it. And to me, while the process takes longer, but I feel at home, and I feel that Muda finally will be that disruptive force in Malaysian politics. Well, what about, uh, I mean, it sounds great within the party, but there's always going to be coalition dynamics if you have to forge alliances. What is Muda's stand on that? I know that Muda has been um, public in its support or in its allegiance or alliance with Warisan. Could you explain a little bit why Warisan? Uh, is that representative of new politics? I mean, given who the party uh, leaders are, you know, from old politics, why, why tie up with Warisan and what is the uh, Muda's approach to uh, party alliances, political alliances? Thank you very much, Melissa. There are two points here. Uh, one is Muda must forge alliances based on values and principles, not just on personalities and friendship per se. What this means is whatever alliances we build will not be exclusive to only one party or one group of people. So closer to election, and again, it's hard to say now because I think we've all witnessed how past was with BN, now it's with PN, Gerakan was here, and now Gerakan moves here. And then uh, multiple new parties set up. I'm not sure where Party Bangsa Malaysia will be at. Will, will it be with BN? Will it be with PN? Now there are some things will go the other way. So it's very confusing. So that's why I think for Muda, our values and principles must be set out clearly. So the reason why we are working for Arisan because we believe that we should strengthen Sarawak and Sabah uh, local-based parties who are truly multiracial and moderate. Because I believe that Sabah and Sarawak will play a pivotal role in shaping a truly multiracial, moderate, Malaysian-first mindset. Um, and that's why I think working closely with uh, Sabah and Sarawak-based parties are very important. In Semenanjung, I believe Muda, and this is the second point, Muda has a responsibility to prove itself first. Our worthiness to the public, to, to our future voters, of our potential, our beliefs, our principles, our policies before we start engaging in more concrete coalition building. Because the last thing which I want to do is for Muda to be portrayed as a junior partner or only as another youth wing of a political coalition. Because in order for us to disrupt and overhaul Malaysian democracy and our political system, Muda must be that disruptive force, must come in with great support coming from all backgrounds of Malaysians, so that in the end, we can truly reset Malaysia for good. So coalition building will come later. Let us prove ourselves to Malaysians first. Sorry, what are the biggest challenges for Muda going forward in the next, say, uh, uh, you know, six months or to a year? Um, I think there are, I mean, there are a lot of challenges from the top of my mind. One is to balance out idealism and pragmatism. Uh, what I mean by this, uh, for example, basic things like fundraising, um, typical party fundraising will be a few people meeting up with a few billionaires, getting the cash cow ready, and then funding the party. But whoever forms government will forever be beholden to them. And that's why uh, the, the politics of elitism is very strong because uh, big businesses know how to hedge their bets remarkably well. So I believe what Muda should do, instead of perpetuating the same structure, 
have a proper auditing which is published every year. Two is try our best to publish every single cent of our party expenditure every month. Three, put a cap on how much each donor can contribute. Um, and finally, our main, uh, our main fundraising effort must come through crowdfunding. Obviously, there will be businesses and businessmen who like to donate. However, they cannot be the biggest source of donation because in the end, if one or two businesses pull out, then Muda will be the biggest losers. And I can tell you again, uh, Sharon and Melissa, the reason I feel at home, uh, I won't go into great details, but we were supposed to get a very nice office last year, two floors in a particular mall. And we lost uh, that wonderful space when Muda decided to champion uh, on a particular issue, um, uh, especially when we uh, opposed the Subang takeover, which we believe was unethical, wrong, process was not done properly. Um, but again, we, we, Muda members didn't care. They said, never mind, we'll use our houses. We have, I mean, they, uh, some, some of our young guys uh, run their own startups. Said, never mind, I'll borrow half uh, of, of my office space for you. And we really find a way to work it out. And uniquely for a party with 73,000 members, which have fundraised now collectively almost uh, 4 million ringgit, we have just completed our very humble uh, central office where we took over a two-story really old house <laughs> and make that our office space, which is okay. We're meant to be a digitally disruptive party. We learn from it. Uh, and I think that will be one of the examples uh, of, of a challenge which we'll face, aligning pragmatism and idealism. Sadiq, thank you so much for speaking with us today. That was our conversation with Syed Sadiq, um, Syed Abdurrahman of Parti Muda. And that wraps up this episode of Consider This. I'm Melissa Idris. And I'm Sharad Kutin signing off for the evening. Thank you so much for watching and good night.